Hi there, I'm Manoj and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple tic-tac-toe game using Python and Tikinter module. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to import Tikinter module. Uh, we'll use this module to create buttons and graphical user interface and other uh, widgets that we'll use in our game. Uh, so the next thing is you need to import this tikinter.messagebox module um, through which we can uh, show some pop-ups in between the game uh, if a game if the game is completed or if it's a tie. So. Um, the first thing uh, in the program is you need to create a tickinter object. So using this uh, tk uh, function, you can uh, create a tickinter object. Make sure that um, t is capital and k is small. And we need to give a title for our game window, right? So I'm going to uh, keep it as a tic tac toe. So in order to get the window, we need a main loop. So I've mentioned tk dot main loop where tk is our game object, tickinter object. So let us now run this. And what we will get here is a simple uh, GUI, a simple uh, window with no buttons and nothing. So now we'll uh, add some buttons uh, to the game. So the first thing is uh, a button. Uh, we need nine buttons right uh, for a tic-tac-toe a simple tic-tac-toe game so the first every button uh, looks like this uh, button one this is the first button and we we are creating a button using this uh, button uh, constructor uh, which will create a button object uh, so uh, we we need to mention our tickinter window tk and the text on every button initially is empty so i'm going to to mention a empty space and the font i'm using is times 20 bold you can use a font of your wish and background color i'll, I'll prefer gray for every button and the foreground which means the text on the color appears in red the height of the button is four the width is eight and we need to specify the command that the button performs uh, whenever we click the button. So the command attribute, uh, I'm providing a lambda function called uh, button click. Okay, it'll do nothing right now because we didn't define it. So uh, using grid function, you can uh, define the location of the button in your window. So I'm uh, locating this button at row one and column zero. So we need to create uh, eight more buttons like this. So I've already created them, uh, button two, button three, and so on until button nine. And we need to specify different uh, locations for them using the grid function. So the location for the second uh, button is row one and column one and row one, column two for button three and so on. And let us uh, see if this thing works. Uh, I think it will give us an error because we still didn't define the button click function. So let us um, quickly define the button click function. So this function uh, will do uh, nothing uh, for now. So we'll write the definition later in a while. So let us check if the GUI is uh, all set. Yes, as we can see here, we got nine buttons and on click of every button, it just prints do nothing because we didn't uh, define the do nothing function uh, till now. So the GUI looks uh, clear for me. So now we can move on to the logic and define the button click function. So we've defined the button click function here. Let me explain you uh, what it does. Uh, first of all, we've defined two global variables called uh, bclick, which is a Boolean variable and initialized it to true and a flag variable and initialized it to zero. So in the button click function, the argument is a button and we've imported the global variables bclick and flag. Uh, I'll just, in a while, I'll just uh, explain you the use of those variables 
the first thing is we need to check uh, if a button is empty or not before clicking on that button right after clicking on that button right when you click on a button if it's empty uh, and if the button B click is true which means you're clicking the button so you'll uh, insert a X in that button and uh, invert B click to false and check for a win so after each and every turn we are checking for a win uh, on the board and next we are going to increment the flag variable um, let me explain you what this flag variable does flag variable uh, tells you if the game is over or not right uh, how many uh, moves do we have on a simple tic-tac-toe game uh, maximum of nine right uh, more than nine we cannot have any moves so as soon as we get nine moves we need to conclude the game so we are incrementing flag variable which we have defined to zero initially and for each and every move we are incrementing it by one and as soon as we reach the flag which is greater than or equal to eight so we'll conclude the game and see say it's a draw game and the next else if statement does pretty much the same thing as the first one but this thing allows us to insert a zero on a button so the same logic we've applied as the above one button text equals to empty if the button is empty if the button is not clicked previously and button click is false so we need to insert a zero on the button and we need to invert the button click to true Whenever the B click is true, it implies that it's the chance of player X. And whenever the B click is false, as you can guess, it's the turn of O. So as I mentioned earlier, we are going to check for a winner if there is a winner or not after each and every move. And as we've done above, we are going to increment the flag variable. If it's not empty, and if the button click is either true or false then which which means that the button is already clicked it's either x or zero show info using the message box module we've imported in the beginning and say that button is already clicked so that's it for this function button click and let us define this function called check for win so this is the check for win function which checks for a winner after each and every move. So the first thing is we are comparing these three uh, buttons. The first, second and the third button. And the second one is the fourth, fifth and sixth buttons. If there is an X in this, this and this button which is the fourth, fifth and sixth buttons which means X has won and we are going to check for each and every possibility for a x win so it may be this row or this row or this row or this column one of the three columns or diagonally so it is eight cases different cases for x to win in the same way now we're going to disable the all the buttons as soon as we find out that x has won and we are going to get a give a pop-up that using the message box uh, module called player x wins and game over and we are going to reset all the buttons for the next game so the next else if the next else if statement does pretty much the same thing but instead of checking for x win it checks for o's win so there are eight different cases for o to win as i have mentioned earlier and the next else if statement which means that neither x nor o has won but still the flag has reached eight means we have completed eight moves on the board but still we don't have a winner which means that it's a draw so this is the function which is used to reset the complete board what it does is it initializes flag and b click to zero and true respectively and clear the status of every button and reactivate them again for the next game so as soon as we click 
on the reset button which I've provided it's not necessary to provide this button but in case if you are in between a game and you want to reset the game and play it again from the beginning so I've provided this button so I hope you've understood this the use of this reset function so it initializes the flag and uh, b click to zero and true respectively and uh, calls the clear status and activate functions which i'm going to show you right now so these are the three functions which are used to uh, reset the game reset the board of course uh, the first thing is clear status button what it does it is it clears all the inputs of the buttons so whether the button has x or o it clears them to initially which is empty empty string so for button in buttons so you can see here i've created a list called button which includes all the nine buttons so that i shouldn't mention them uh, each individually for uh, applying some changes so i'm just iterating through the button uh, list and just initializing them to a empty string so this is the use of the clear status function and the next comes the disable function which is used to disable each and every uh, button or on the board so that the user cannot click on the button after the game is over so the next thing is activate function as the same i've done on the above two functions i'm iterating through the list of buttons and uh, configuring them to normal uh, as i've disabled them in this previous function disable so that's it uh, let us check if the game works so one thing to change uh, we can just uh, change this eight to nine because the total moves on a board are 9. I've accidentally uh, mentioned it as 8. So let us check now for a draw. Player X1 because this diagonal is conquered by player X. So that's it for this video and make sure to like the video if it is of any use for you guys. And I'll meet you in the next one.